Uh, this is Lalita Bhattacharji, nutritionist with FAO based in Bangladesh. There have been some experiences uh, from the Bangladesh uh, context where uh, nutrition is an integral part of the agriculture curriculum in the schools. And uh, there have been attempts to link this up with the practical modules at the school level with the school gardening so that you can uh, promote healthy behaviors among the school students and also involve them in some of the practical recipe preparation and improve their lunches and breakfast because many of these children come from very poor families on almost an empty stomach. So I think it's very helpful to make the link between the service delivery programs that is the school feeding with what is happening in the, in the curriculum as well so that we can have a sustainable approach to improve improving uh, uh, nutrition and uh, food behaviors. And on a larger level, with reference to the parent-teacher associations, which don't exist in that uh, structured way, but I think in a sustainability point of view, the school garden that you have, if it's going to be throughout the year, I think somebody has to take responsibility for maintaining the school gardens, and that's where the rural communities and the local government comes in. So there have been some experiences over there. Thank you. Uh, in front of, yeah, yeah, there you go. Thank you, Chairman. I am Chadda from World Vegetable Center. I endorse the point just now from Bangladesh somebody has raised, but I, will, I am very happy to know that the money is there for irrigation and research. I would like to add here two points that AVRDC is working for the school garden for the last 35 years, and we have very much, I would say, location-specific modules which are fit for Africa, Asia, and other places. They need to be brought to the schools. And if we can implement those in the schools, children will get education which they can take back to their home or families where they can start producing food in the home gardens. This will have a very big impact. And I tell you, just from six by six meter, we have the module which are giving 300 kg of vegetable, addressing vitamin A and C. And to the 50%, they are also addressing iron and protein. But then we have made different recipes to address other issues which are not there. We are modifying them and then making iron and protein available 100%. It's a small area which gives very, very high productivity. My second point quickly is that <coughs> contact growing we are doing in Bangkok of vegetable soybean and 100 gram of green pods as, serves as school meal during noon. It's a wonderful going on. Farmers are earning, children are getting school meal, and very nutritious vegetable soybean, not grain soybean. This is another which we have removed bini flavor gene out of the field soybean. So these two points can be seen. It can be any other crop contractual. So I'm saying add garden and contractual cultivation of the farmer. Thank you. Hello. Uh, Warwick is down. From also from AVRDC, the World Vegetable Center here in uh, uh, India. In most countries of the world, the uh, per capita production of vegetables is well below the minimum necessary for good health. And I wonder what the experience of the various programs have been in changing uh, the vegetable consumption uh, patterns within those communities. Because in many cases, it's not just a matter of economics, it's also a matter of culture that people are not consuming nearly enough vegetables for good health. So what has been the experience in improving vegetable consumption as well as improving vegetable production in those communities? Great question, thank you. Uh, I am Alem Hadera from uh, Millennium Village Project in Ethiopia. I just want to share our experience uh, in school meal program. Uh, as you can see from the presentation made by the Brazil, the school meal feeding program is a very costly uh, program. So sustainability issue comes with, uh, uh, with allocating uh, resources uh, to that. So our experience in uh, the Millennium Village project is the, um, to work on improving agriculture, support households in small-scale irrigation, and um, ensure community contribution. So this was very encouraging for the first two years when we had good rain, but when we had drought, this community contribution was not forthcoming. So sustainability issues uh, are very important when it comes to uh, partner like WFP commitment and also commitment of the government. For instance, in Ethiopia, there is WFP covers a huge number of schools for school meal program, but they could not cover the entire country. 
So um, investing on agriculture is key. The other lesson that we learn is uh, it's not only the food that's very expensive, but also the cooking, the fuel. The fuel is very important component of the school meal program. So we had an innovative uh, way of instead of cooking for five hours and six hours uh, maize on, or uh, wheat, uh, we came up with germination of food so that you don't need environmental friendly school meal program or community based environmental friendly school meal program. So I think uh, if efforts are put into this research and uh, uh, like this uh, consultations, uh, we can come up with innovative approach of improving school meal program and making them cost effective. Thank you for the innovation um, and, and making that link between cost effectiveness and cost efficiency. Um, I don't know whether it's Brazil or the World Bank, one of them, I, and I can't, not maybe in this uh, presentation, uh, where there has been a study showing, yes, it might cost two billion, but what is the return on investment uh, is a lot higher than in fact the two billion. So the, yes, the upfront it costs, but immediate return and long-term return uh, is higher, but any of the panelists can can take, can take uh, that point if they wish. There was only one question, so I will allow uh, a couple of questions more. One here and one there. Uh, one over here. Yes, I'm coming back. I'm coming through on this side. <laughs> uh, he's going first and you're going second. Okay. Uh, my name is Godwin Oyediji from Nigeria. Uh, permit me if I'm ignorant. Uh, is there a standard? I'm just throwing this to Daniel and Alice. Is there a standard quality? Okay. Is there a standard quality? I mean, uh, a standard for the food in terms of um, quality and quantity, in terms of um, uh, maybe micronutrient, um, animal protein, energy? because um, I believe this will have a direct bearing on the cost. Um, the second part of it is, if it has been recognized that improper nutrition at an early stage will lead to poor mental development, and the world today is now grappling with a lot of issues that are directly related to people reasoning correctly, um, terrorism is one. And people are easily persuaded, go and commit suicide, bomb yourself and then die, and people do it happily. Why would we not uh, recommend to the appropriate organ or anyone within the United Nations framework that the school feeding program should not be left to be voluntary through whatever uh, means our experts can fashion out? I'm a direct beneficiary of school feeding program in 1957. I probably would have dropped out of school. But I am a PhD holder today. So I think uh, we should start thinking ahead of um, not just leaving nations, no matter how poor, no matter excuses um, every country will give for not starting this program. Some started and left it. My country was one of it in different states. Thank you. I think uh, if you get the same results from doing what you've always been doing, that's radical. But uh, we will we, we, we'll have a consideration of, of your proposal. Uh, uh, okay. The last question from this okay. uh, side, and then, uh, uh, and then I'll, the panelists can begin to answer. Uh, thank you. Thank you, <coughs> Madam Chairperson. This question is for Alice. She talked briefly about a coordinated uh, provision of other services besides school feeding. Can you a little bit elaborate on that? And another one is, uh, what is the contribution of school feeding program on the intergenerational um, aspects of nutrition? Has there been studies? There are a lot of uh, good things uh, came up here, but um, I would like to know a little bit more about that. Because when World Bank talked about uh, focusing on window of opportunities, focus on mothers, pregnant mothers and children of under two years of age. Their focus was mainly on nutrition and um, uh, um, the cognitive development of children. And uh, when you look at the Lancet series list, it, is, it has been 
pointed out it is not the intervention to be promoted for the sake of nutrition. So, would you, uh, so these are the two questions, one for Dr. Bundy and one for Alice. Sorry, time, the one question in the front here. The, the, I, I know I'm, I'm going for a lot. And then we'll start with you, Daniel. Ursula Schäfer, Preuss, Asian Development Bank. As the panel had no representative from an Asian country, but Asia is really, and the Pacific, and uh, Asian Development Bank is working in the Asia and the Pacific, has a lot of people undernourished and hunger is still an issue. I just wanted to mention that point here and also make reference to a study which the Asian Development Bank is undertaking regularly together with UNSCAP and UNDP, looking into the accomplishments of the M MDGs and their hunger and poverty is an issue. It's not a way and I'm happy that the two delegates from Bangladesh and Nepal have made some reference to that and just to mention that the Asian development has hunger also on their agenda in particular in Mongolia we are involved in some food fortification programs but also in other countries I just wanted to mention that as a matter of completing our exercise and thanks for the excellent presentation on former zero I've been involved in earlier capacities in that and I think this is really a very forward-looking program from which we all can learn a lot thank you Thank you very much uh, also for sharing that. Maybe I'll start actually with Don uh, because he, he didn't get a, to, to say anything before uh, and he has a lot to say in this round. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for the contribution from uh, the Asian Development Bank. As a, another banker, I have to uh, particularly acknowledge that. But I'd also like to acknowledge that that we did talk about China in the uh, uh, in the opening discussions, which I think is a big chunk of. Okay. Yeah, that's. I was going to say nobody ran for cover, so we're obviously we're obviously pretty relaxed in here, which is great. I I really want to come back to the issue that was raised about, the, about early child development, clearly a crucial issue and, and, and a big topic of discussion in the, in the meeting, meeting here. Um, uh, I, I think it's you know, indisputable the validity of the argument that children during the critical period of growth and development need to be supported. And indeed, the, the economic argument for early investment with children is, is very well made. That does not, of course, mean that that's the only thing that needs to be done. And I think that that's perhaps a message that's not being adequately uh, carried over. I, I, was, I was a little embarrassed that you said the World Bank said, because, you know, that's also me. And, and you know, we would, we would like to feel that, that, that we were contributing to a, de a debate and a discussion that's, uh, that, that, that's going, going on. So let me, be, let me be very specific here, and I'm speaking um, in, in my role with, with Africa region. Um, in Africa region, we're working very hard to look at the issue not only across age groups, but across sectors. So we have an initiative we call the Healthy Children initiative. And that's specifically trying to address the, the kind of question that you were implying. How do we operationally, how do countries operationally respond to the need to support children throughout their lives? And the answer is that there have to be not only different kinds of health or nutrition interventions, but different interventions from education and from, from the, the social sectors as well. If I, you know, just to state the obvious, one of the most effective ways of affecting population, as we all now know, is girls' education. That's, act, you know, and if you don't have education as well as uh, health and access to, uh, to, to contraception and so on, you, you aren't actually going to achieve your goals. And, and, and it's the same thing if we think about investing in, in, in early nutrition. That's an, a critically important thing to do, but it can't be the only thing to do. And it's how we build up that... Uh, that whole picture, and I mean, one of the one of the critical mes me messages I think from school feeding is that ensuring that that young women in particular are are well nourished, are healthy, 
um, as, they, as they become uh, women and mothers as, is a critical contribution to early child development. It's not, a, it's not separate from early child development, it's part of that intervention. And I think a, 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 a debate, a more open debate, about what actually are the keystones to child development in the, in the, in th through, throughout uh, the development of, of, of a human being would perhaps be more helpful in operational, in operational terms. And I, I suspect that that was the, uh, the, the, the key issue that you were raising. But I, but I do want to be very clear in case I, I uh, a, a appear to be promoting school feeding as, the, as a solution. I see it only as part of the picture. And it's clearly not going to solve the problem of, of chronic malnutrition except in the sense it, that it can help children get a good start in life if they're the children of young women coming out of school. So, uh, I, I, but I think it's a, one, a very good question and I really appreciate you asking it. Good, and I think the question or the point made uh, about uh, um, nutrition education, curriculum and uh, access and provision uh, are, are also important in what you're saying. Thank you to the, to the floor for the questions I'm asking us to give responses to. I, there's a question on the vegetable consumption, um, changing habits and practices linked to production. We all know that many women are into vegetable gardening in um, the region where I come from, West Africa. And um, they produce to sell, they do not produce to eat. So there's a lot of work to be done to change those practices. And one of them is through school gardens where water is available, we are promoting a school garden where there's a school feeding program. So that part of the vegetables are eaten with the meals. And also the children know, learn about vegetables and why they, it is important for their health and growth. And they can translate that information to their parents. So at home, they can also start eating the vegetables that the mothers produce. But it's a long process, and we need to, to just keep on doing it. Um, there was another question about um, sustainability in the Millennium Village. We have similar programs in Mali, um, where the Millennium Village program is um, doing school feeding. And it is it's so important to note that in some places, it is seasonal. If the, if the crop season is bad, those parents might not be able to supply to the school. And so who takes over? It's a program we do not stop doing. If once you start in the beginning of the school year, you, you, to maintain those children, you have to feed them throughout the year. So there should be some backup system, either government or through. That is why the mayors, the, the municipalities should be very involved so they can, they can step in and cover some of the costs. Another from Nigeria. The standard on the standard on quality and um, and um, quantity, <laughs> WFP has put in place with WHO support um, the, the standards for the the, 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 the the rations the rations for the school a child, and it contains protein um, lipids and and um, fats and then and, and um, protein and the cereals so that each country can design its program based on the local foods where you have um, in, the, in, the, in the coastal countries where you produce mostly tubers, you see how that can fit into a school feeding program. In Cote d'Ivoire, unfortunately, it's not so easy to get there. But if you go there, you'll see a very beautiful school meals program where the communities are producing and the kids are eating what comes from within the region. And so if you look at those standards, you, you can, you can, and you have the universal FAO standards of the, the calorie intake per person per day, you can easily prepare a, a, a food basket for the school meals program. Nigeria, I went there several times a few years ago. Governments did pass a law that school feeding should be compulsory. A new government came and put it aside, so it's a pity. Maybe you should go back to the federal government and push for it, advocate for it, or you have somebody here. But Oshun State and some other states are still doing a good program. Yeah. So we need to encourage the other states to take on. It should be a community-based program, not government-funded, because that was where the problem came from. And then bringing other sectors on board, um, it, is, it, it can be very easy, and the private sector is key. Because in Mali, when we talk to the government about the government doing a school feeding program, the, the prime minister looked at it from a different angle and said, 
Well, if we bring the private sector, then they can do processing, ready to use foods, and, and um, take over, I mean, support the communities so that you create jobs, you create an, a different type of, um, of environment that makes people want to use what is being avail made available to them. So there are opportunities for bringing on the private sector. You need to look at water. We cannot produce, provide meals without clean water. So you bring on board the, the energy and water sector so that there are boreholes and there are, there are proper wells in the, in the schools and, and other things. We can talk after this, but also looking at fuel consumption. Somebody talked about, about firewood. Or, or, or gas, it is expensive, but you can do some of those um, things with the private sector. I, I think also what Alice is saying is that you make sure that we don't look at, 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 uh, at school feeding as an insular uh, program that, that's not related to anything else. You can actually see it as an incentive for other people to come in and, and, and not only contribute, but in fact it makes way it makes good business sense. Uh, I'll, uh, because there was a specific question to you about uh, the quality control. Well, it's important to say that uh, in Brazil, all the municipalities, 5,563 municipalities, 26 states and federal districts, to receive the money for the school feeding, they must have a nutritionist that is responsible for the menu. Also, we have nutritionists in all the schools of Brazil to uh, making the, the menu. But most important of this is that we have a system that we created in Brazil that calculates, help the nutritionist to calculate the nutritional property of the menus. So the nutritionist create the menu and the system says if the, it has the proteins, the carbohydrates, the fat, the calories, the fiber, etc., that the children need to grow uh, uh, healthy. So we we created this this system. We ha we 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 have a, a continuous uh, property of this system, and we, we know. In all the in all the municipalities of Brazil, what they are eating. I I had some slides with the nutrition, uh, just nutrition. Two slides I will show. I know that the time, but I will show the the, the, the slides because they are very important. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, yes. This, this is the meals offered at school. So this is the graphic, uh, you can see, but after you, you, you if, if, if each one that wants to see, I can, I can uh, uh, give you the presentation. So the, the percentage of foods offered at all the schools of Brazil. This is the consumption of fruits and vegetables in Brazil. So uh, the fruits uh, uh, increased from 2004 to 2008, from 28% to 62%, and vegetables from 57% to 8% of the children eat vegetables in all the schools. And this is the macronutrient provided carbohydrate, protein, fat. We have reference value in our uh, uh, law and they have to uh, follow this reference value. So with the system we can see if they, they are following in you, you, you see with this graphic that they are following the nutrients, uh, macronutrients necessary. And the calories and fiber provided. So they are providing more calories and more, more fi fiber that we need. And this is the conception of rice, bean, vegetable, salt. This is the amount that, that they are consuming every year in Brazil. So we are very concerned about nutrition and we have nutritionists in all the schools, in all the municipalities taking care of our students. Okay? Thank you very much. Well, uh, I think we, I think unfortunately, you, uh, this, I mean, this has been a very active uh, 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 conversation and, and a lot of people have expressed interest and, and in fact uh, sharing of, of information. Um, I will not take up any of your time in trying to, to summarize. 
uh, I think we, we, we've all heard all of the key questions that were coming up, the, t the key issues. And I think uh, uh, Dawn made the point that perhaps there needs to be uh, conversations separately also about the whole child development uh, uh, cycle, if you want, so that we don't, we don't uh, kind of cut a slice out of, out of the life of a child every time by, by discussing just a particular part. But I think school f with this conversation, we are trying to show that there are linkages with, with other uh, sectors. Instead of my, me summarizing, I think I'll, I'll give uh, Dr. Songa the chance to say his wrap up. Yeah, thank you very much, Chair. I think uh, I'm, I'm, I am indeed uh, impressed with the, the, the clarifications and uh, suggestions and comments that, uh, that came from the floor, because I, th uh, I think this is a very important uh, subject, and uh, that early child development cannot be taken uh, uh, for, for, uh, uh, for granted. It is important that uh, we see how we address this as effectively as possible. And this should be really the first and foremost responsibility of any government. Maybe before I uh, come to say uh, the, the final uh, uh, comment, is just uh, probably to touch on what, we, what seemed to have been left out, the provision of water, at least in the context, in the African context. If you were to know how much time the women take to look for water. And I, I'm happy also the issue of energy came in. The time taken to look for water and the time taken to look for firewood. And how this has an environmental uh, 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 effect. Even we, uh, I think the mention of vegetables, why aren't we consuming enough vegetables? Ladies and gentlemen, in communities where water has been provided for irrigation, that consumption starts almost automatically because really water is the problem in these pastoral areas. And we have also not taken advantage because most of these areas, at least in the Kenyan context, are pastoral areas, and we have not linked very well the animal production or the pastoral uh, activities with the agricultural or farming activities, because this actually should be able to support each other. But we have left them in isolation. But what we want to, to, uh, to see as we move forward is to see how we invest such that now we look at pastoralism as supporting this uh, agricultural production, but we must also uh, provide the appropriate technologies, the appropriate seed for crops in this environment, these fragile environments. M Madam Chair, m maybe just to finish, I think at the end of the day, it will also depend on what policies we put in place. Kenya has just uh, got a new constitution, and in this constitution, the right to food is ensured to every citizen. So if we are going to put this in the constitution and we do nothing about it, then really, it, 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 we are not going to get far. Let us make sure that we, we, we take this to the highest level possible and also invest to ensure that that becomes a reality. Because for sure, there is no government that can really be proud of itself if it cannot feed its own people. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, I, I think there's another group that's about, that needs the room. Uh, I, I've been given the green card, which means stop. Uh, believe it or not, uh, a number of times. So again, to, to thank you all for, the, for coming and also for participating so actively uh, in this conversation on school feeding or rethinking school feeding. Thank you. <laughs>